then you can go out of your way to make it inconsistent. I can go out of my way mm-hmm. and run and run open office in yeah. X. Yeah, all, 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 all environments like that. That's nature of development because people choose different toolkits. And let's, let me finish. Let me together. finish. I can go out of my way to make OS X be inconsistent, and, and I have. I run Windows. I run Linux on my Mac system. Now, I will say when I'm running Windows, most of my hotkeys for Mac work on Windows because I'm using a solution that does that for me. So I can use my Command Q to quit, say. But Yes, there's of course there's inconsistencies. I'm running Windows, but I have gone out of my way to do this. That is not the same thing on Linux where you talk about, well, if I'm using KDE, but you're not using KDE, you're using PC Linux. You're using Mint, you're no. using Ubuntu. You're that's, not that's using what they are. Do you know how you make a distribution? Of course, you're putting stuff together, but you're using the distribution. That's exactly it. You're not using KDE. You're using PC Linux. There is the You're vanilla using... version of KDE, and sometimes they change the wallpapers, and they might actually change the name of applications. Uh, I don't think PC Linux OS does much more than try to organize the menus for you and try to put the panels in such a way that it looks, de- looks similar to Windows. Well, let, let me ask you this. I, do, yeah. I can't do this, of sure, course, yeah. when we're on the, on, the, on, the, on the show right now, but if you, you keep talking about PC Linux, right? Mm. After the show, I will download it, and I will go. I will install nothing else other than what just downloads it. And I said I don't. I haven't used the newest one, so if it has some recommended, if it doesn't come with the word processor, there is a, uh, there is a June version of uh, of Linux OS that's based on uh, based on uh, KDE, I think, four point six. So that's supposed to be really quite uh, good based on the reviews I've seen so far. So yeah, I, I, I'd be very happy if you. So I go ahead yeah. and, and I will post this. I will make yeah. either screenshots or maybe even a quick video, and we'll yeah. we'll look at it. Now, I said I haven't used the newest one, but I can say looking now, Mint and Ubuntu actually have gotten much better the last few versions. Mm-hmm. I was I was actually surprised that the first programs I looked at on Mint were not were as inconsistent as as they are. But let me look at PC Linux. I will go ahead. I will send that to you. So maybe you guys can post a link to it on the show um, or from your site. I will post links to it from not from my my main site only because that's not the focus of my site. Um, but I could post links to that also, and I could pretty much guarantee you it, it there will be a mix of quit and exit. There will be a mix of hotkeys. I would there like will to see be that. a mix of save dialogues. There will be a mix of of print dialogues, there will be some programs will will um, lose the clipboard when you quit. Some programs won't. I the, should actually tell you, it's actually interesting you raise this point, because the way we work, usually when you develop something in Qt, uh, you might use as a starting point something that's based on, uh, on the GPL. So you could use the menu structure of somebody else, and there is nothing wrong with that, as long as it's GPL, it's part of the framework. The other thing that, that happens in KDE, is you have kparts and you have all the source code to all the underlying libraries. So even when you're doing something like a fine dialog, you might say that's going to be inconsistent, but that's just not true. Because what you would use, you'd use a service that's existing to you, as free software, to access a certain, uh, basically you have Kyo slaves, and you have things like the, the file dialog, and you have things like the print dialog, which isn't very specific to an application, but it's part of the framework as a whole. The same thing goes for sound and for graphics, and yesterday we had a chat about the colors, so you can change the colors and the themes in all the applications consistently, very consistently. Uh, so, so the way it works in KDE, I would be quite surprised if it's very inconsistent. And I, I would be very happy if you found found some cases where it's not consistent. That maybe actually help developers. You know. Let, right? let me let me reiterate though. I'm not talking KDE. I'm talking PC Linux. Yeah, which which doesn't those change much of KDE. Same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, they're they're not the same though. Gentlemen, and, what, what we'll do. Uh, people- Sorry, what, what I was going to, what I was going to say, this will go around in, in circles with the uh, discussion about it. So, because Michael's our guest, I will let Michael, before we move on to the next topic, have the last word on this one. Um, because obviously we're now going around in circles. So Michael, if you would like to round off your view or your other points, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Two quick things. One, I think this is great that we have, yeah, I could, I've not looked at PC and Linux. Roy, obviously you have. So now I could download it and we can see who's right, who's wrong. And so we have a, a distinct way. And 
let me be clear. There's going to be even on any on any system. There's going to be minor inconsistencies. I if I can't show a fair number on a default install of PC Linux, then I'm wrong. Then I'm wrong. And so so yeah, you you have that at least on PC Linux. I'm wrong. Um, oh, and I had another point, and it <laughs> is that's fine if you if you're right. Oh, oh, I, I think that's. The other point is, is getting back to choice, just real fast on that. What I want, I've had in the, in other forums people saying I want less choice. Not true at all. I want, some people want when they go to save, they just want a really simple dialogue that allows you to just save. Others want from their save dialogues to be able to rename files, to be able to move files. Why shouldn't I be able to pick that on a system level, not just in KDE, not just in GNOME, but a PC Linux level, a Ubuntu level. To do this, of course, there needs to be all sorts of coordination within the environment. But you should be able to have a universal color selector so that it works in every program on your system. It does exist. It minor does exist. exceptions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You well, should have consistent hotkey. As the user, I should pick it. On Mac, yes, I can get third party to tweak some of that. I could change some of the hotkeys. But it's just thrown at you. If you don't like it, if you don't like that menu at the top, you're stuck with it. Yeah, third party can alter it a little bit. Linux should be the place where choice really is there. And I should be able to pick that choice across the distro. Yeah. My sure. choice. So you see, two, two I, types of choice. Just a very quick point. Uh, not, not, nothing hostile or anything. Uh, there is the choice where I kind of worry if one company as before, you know, before Mac basically had a renaissance of sorts. Uh, there was a case where people were almost virtually forced to buy Windows. So let's say sometime about 10 years ago. It was really hard to even get Linux to work with all the things you wanted on the web. Uh, some sites would require it to use Internet Explorer, and I, I remember those days uh, where it was really hard to even get to the videos on the, the net. Everything was requiring Windows Media Player. And uh, there is the danger that if Apple is the only environment to develop for, either in phones or in desktops, they will insist that you use a certain toolkit. And they will not allow you the diversity like GDK and Qt. And that's that's one level of choice that I think about. And this is why I think Linux is quite necessary as a as a family of, of environments, a family of choices to pick from. And you know that whichever one you pick you, you pick basically, you will have the ability to move somewhere else based on what's better. And not the company, not any one company is going to instruct you what to use and what is the next API. In the case of Windows, you see many APIs dying, things like Silverlight and .NET not doing so well. I guess I'd like to see more choice for users and developers having to work around that. In other words, developers having to work together more. And I think that's coming. I mean, right now, there's an active debate with, with GNOME and KDE that, that GNOME changed the name of system preferences to something that you know, KDE had that first, and those teams are having to work together to say, wait a second, who owns this name? And I realize it's not ownership in the terms of uh, you know, going through the courts, but who owns the name? KDE had it first. They have squatters' rights, if you will. They own that. Well, well, Gnome, you need to work with KDE and and pick a different name. Or I saw this. I saw this answer today, and I thought it was brilliant. Let them both use it. But if you have both on the same system, one comes up as KDE system preferences, one comes up as GNOME system preferences, and let the developers work together so that the two systems work together in a consistent way and in a way. This is hard. I'm, I'm not. You know trying, the context. I, I've read about this debate. It's basically taking place in the mailing lists, and it's to do with GNOME three trying to call it system set system settings, and this is what a KB in fact called the uh, the thing for a while. And the context of this, they have a, a desktop summit in Berlin. Uh, where only several of the GNOME and KDE developers have been speaking about it. Now, I don't think it's a flame war. I don't think, I, I think there is a misunderstanding here, and maybe somebody exaggerated the, the seriousness of it. They actually have a summit together, both the KDE and GNOME developers, and it would be very nice if they actually unified some of those things, in, at least in terms of names. I mean, obviously, some of the options applying to KDE will not apply equally well to GNOME, but one of the things I'll say about you'll find in KDEs, uh, there is what's called Cute Curve. And what it's doing basically, when you're using a, K, a GDK based application, it's going to inherit many of the properties you have for your 
a cute application to KD to GDK. So if I'm running, if I choose to have a dark theme in 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 KDE with all my cute applications, then I get something that's based in GDK. It's going to look very similar to the rest of my application. So even across the different toolkits, I'm not sure if you've paid attention to it. In